it's a solid wine, something to bring to a dinner party. Oh. I'm Matthew Horky. For the last seven years, I've traveled around the world tasting thousands of wines annually in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. Nero d'Avila is the most planted red grape variety in Sicily. Sicily is the biggest island in the Mediterranean. It's part of Italy, right between the mainland, the boot, and Africa. Even though Nero d'Avila is commonly accepted as an indigenous Sicilian grape, it might be from Calabria, the toe of Italy. There it's known as Calabrese. Although the best examples you're gonna find are in Sicily. In the past, the grape was mostly used in blends or for bulk wine, but in the 1990s and the early 2000s, that's when we started to see premium bottles with Nero de Avila on the label. It can be blended with Syrah, Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon to make some pretty interesting wines, but I do think it can stand on its own. Like a lot of Italian red grapes, they're gonna have more red fruit flavors. That's why I think I'm really drawn to Italian red wines. I love that red juiciness. I love the bitter espresso tans. I love the acidity because it's essential to pair with Italian food. I remember the first time I went to Sicily, I was just a consumer. I wasn't working in the wine business. I heard so much about Sicilian wines, Nero de Avila, and I tried some from restaurants and I thought, man, these wines aren't very impressive at all. And that's the thing, when you're learning about wine when you don't know that much, if you're just going to go into the normal shop or tourist restaurants or more simple restaurants, you're not gonna get the best examples. You really have to be in the know, go to specialty shops, high-end wine bars, and in general, a lot of the best Sicilian wines are actually exported. Sicily is hot right now because of Etna, so for reds, Norello, Mascalese, Norello, Capuccio, and then White's Caracante. Those are grown on the slopes of Mount Etna, high elevation, but Nero de Avila, I've come to start really enjoying the wines lately. I found some great examples. In fact, I have two of the best varietal Nero de Avilas that I've ever had. Because there's almost 16,000 hectares of vineyards, we're looking at, what, 40,000 acres, if my math serves me right. There's a lot of red wine made from the grape. Everything from bulk wine to cheap bottle wine to mid-range wines and more expensive wines. We have three right here that hit every price point, around $13. $30 to $35 and then 90 bucks, one of the most iconic Nero d'Avilas. For the least expensive one, we have this Petrial Nero d'Avila, Sicilia <laughs> is the DOC. We would say Sicilia, but in Italy it's Sicilia, 2020. I don't even know, it says this is bottled by C. Pondadera. A lot of times in Italy, you see some of these big companies that would just buy wine that's made all over the country and then bottle it and label it themselves. That's why you can get more affordable wines. This is only 13 bucks. I have not had this before. We also have this wine I came across two years ago when I visited Sicily. This is the Feudu Makari in the village of Noto. This is the Saya 2019, around 35 bucks. I've had past vintages. I thought it was an outstanding wine. It ages really, really well at 30 to 35 bucks. It offers a lot of value for money. And then finally, we have one of the most iconic Nero de Avila's. We have the Dana Fugata Mille e Una Notte, A Thousand and One Nights, inspired by Knights of Arabia, Sicilia Rosso 2018. This was created by the legendary Giacomo Takis, responsible for wines like Sassacaia, San Leonardo, Safrede, and a lot of Italy's most iconic modern red wines. Okay, we're gonna put this to the test. I'm gonna get all three of these blinded. It's gonna be fun to see how this grape does at the cheap, mid-range, in expensive price points and how they compare to each other blind. You ready? I'm ready. Let's get tasting. Ready to rock and roll, tasting out my Gabriel Glass Standard Editions. Love these glasses, universal glasses. Talk about them all the time on the show because they work well with a lot of different grapes, even odd grapes like this one, like Nero d'Avila. I have a link in the description box below if you want to check them out. If you purchase with that link, it helps the channel out a lot. I appreciate it and I do love these glasses. Okay, got these Coravin, had somebody mix them up. I am ready to taste these wines. Nice that I only have three wines, I don't have to have the notepad. I actually, in the past, was not a big fan of Nero d'Avila. Maybe it was that first impression, and then just I hadn't tasted a lot of great examples. But then as I started to get more and more in the wine biz, go to tastings, you taste interesting things, then I started to really like it. I started to really appreciate it. Let's start out with wine one. So maybe on first smell, this might be the, the least expensive one. It doesn't smell like a chemically wine. It just smells like red fruit, red plum. Actually, actually, maybe not. Maybe it's pretty good. Red fruit, red plum is just a little shy right now. A little bit of leather, earth. Okay, never mind. Not the cheap one. <laughs> never mind. It's starting to smell really, really good. If there's wood, it's hidden really well. A little bit of mocha, chocolate. Wines, I just think a lot of people are going to like. 
they're familiar. It's it has a little bit more going on. If you're ever in the south of of Italy, in Sicily, in Puglia, where there's this dry, parched land, it, you kind of smell it on a hot summer day. That's what it smells like. It has a decently persistent finish. I think this is maybe the least expensive wine. Got a lot of grapey flavors, quite fruity, but the length is long. If this is the expensive, uh, inexpensive wine, I'm gonna be really impressed. Let's move on to wine two here. Wine two has a little bit more mocha, definitely red raspberry type flavors grape a little bit of smoke the wood comes on a little bit it is long nice wine <laughs> i'm tricky these these blind tastings can be tough sometimes because you can really trick yourself i have two of the best examples of the grape that i've ever tasted and then a cheap wine and i have to say if either one of these is the cheap wine i'll be really impressed because the first two are pretty good nero de avila needs warmer sites it has been compared to syrah in the past but i think that's just due to how it behaves in the vineyard when sometimes you read about wine you look at descriptions when grape varieties compare to other grape varieties sometimes it's getting pretty technical and they're talking about how they act in the vineyard or how they act in the cellar how they vinify not necessarily in how they taste I don't think that Nero de Avila tastes like Syrah. That's just my opinion. I think Nero de Avila, the tans are a little rounder, while good Syrah, the tans are a bit chewier. Let me taste your number three. Three is, is more black cherry, black plum. It's got some of this chemical type aroma. It's thinner, not as complex. I have to say though, if that was the $13 wine, not an awful wine by any stretch. I think in fact, a lot of people are gonna like it. I think this is the perfect wine to bring to dinner party where a lot of people aren't that interested in wine because it's got enough going on because it's fruity enough for people to enjoy, but it's not super complex. Let's go to, let's go back to one and two here. <laughs> That'd be funny if I get both these. I don't think that's the case though. Okay, that's why I go back, go back to one leather starting to come out a little bit more trying to figure out which one i like more i think two is a better wine let's go back and forth here i like the lightness and the subtleness of one remember at first i thought man this might be the affordable wine and if it is i'm gonna be quite shocked <laughs> two has a little bit more oak but it's got more complexity and length let me just compare one more time i don't want to look totally foolish on camera here <laughs> Here's a difference between a cheap and expensive wine. Number three feels real sharp at the edges, even a little bit hot on the back end, where one and two feel a little bit more smooth, so to speak. I'm having a hard time between one and two. Okay, it's subtle differences, but at the end of the day, my tasting sample, number two is uh, is out before number one. <laughs> you know, you can co talk and, uh, about wine and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, if you're tasting with a big group, look at which wine finishes first, and that's usually the better wine. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's start out with what I thought was the cheapest wine. I actually think this is a pretty darn solid wine. I think if it's not, then I'm just going to get uh, killed here. <laughs> I think this wine, it's fruity. It's just a little sharp at the edges. It's a solid wine, something to bring to a dinner party. Oh. Wow. I don't think I'm ever going to get samples ever again. This is the Donna Fugata Mille e Una Notte, Sicilia Rosso 2018, 90 bucks. The most expensive wine. I just scored it 86 points. <laughs> An importer sent me this wine. I don't think I'll ever get samples from them again. That's how it is. Uh, wow. <laughs> I am uh, uh, again, I'll retaste that, but my goodness, I am shocked. I got to go back and taste this. Remember I said it was a little bit more angular, more... That's, that's just how wine goes Some. I was choosing between wine one and two, and I liked more. Wine one, I gave 90 points. I thought it had a little bit more subtlety, so it was good in that regard. Let's take a... This is the second most expensive wine in the bunch. This is the Feudi Makati, this is the Saya. 2019, 35 bucks. That's about what I've scored this wine in the past when I haven't tasted it blind. Thought it was really, really nice. And I went back and forth and I, I'm honestly shocked. 13 bucks, this has showed the best. I wasn't expecting much. The Petrao near the Avila, Sicilia, DOC, 2020, 13 bucks. 
The power of blind tasting. I just went back after I'm blind finishing the video, tasting this again with an access to the Corvin. I thought the person that mixed it up maybe messed up the cups and they didn't. They did not miss the same wine. Wow, what do you think of Nero de Avila? Have you ever had a tasting like this where you were just blown away by the cheapest wine being your favorite? I'd love to hear. Rest in peace to me ever getting samples from uh, this importer again, I guess. I'll see you soon.